ESPN, Volume 1. I'm your hostess, April D. Now, since the Women's Pro Wrestling Network's creation, we have brought you some of the best ladies on the independent wrestling circuit. Today, we're going to show you some of these videos, plus three huge bonus matches that have never before been seen. Now, when you're talking about the best of, there is no better place to start than with former Resistance Pro Women's Wrestling Champion Darcy Dixon and Calm Like a Bomb Pandora. Now, these two ladies will be competing in a brutal dog collar match. This is a grudge match between two women who simply don't like each other. And I think, you know, I've been respectful and I've been a good sport. And I've tried to, you know, hold my standards high and wrestling with her. But uh, the last match that we had, it was just kind of the end of it. It's like, no more Mrs. Nice Darcy. I'm tired of it. And so what better way to just really show her that I'm not putting up with the crap that she pulls any more than in this match. Well, if you have any direct message to Pandora herself, because I'm sure that this will get around to her. If there's any direct message that you have, is that, would you like to express that right now? What can she expect from you this Saturday in, in this dog collar match? You know, I really, as far as messages to Pandora, I don't really like to waste my time even talking to her because my message is going to be sent in the ring. But I will let her know that she can bring all her little dirty tricks, that she can plan all her little plans out that she wants to. But unfortunately for her, she's going to be going home that night a loser. She goes home every night a loser. But she's going to be going home from this match a loser of the match as well. Wow. Okay. Well, so you, you are pretty well determined that you're going to win this match come hell or high water, apparently. Exactly. Best way to say it. You know, I, I don't want y'all to damage each other too badly. I mean, you know, I, 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 I would have liked it to remain somewhat civil, but I, I'm not the booker here, so I can, yeah, I can, it's, it's I can only pray. I, I will, it's past that. <laughs> it's past that. It, it sounds this ain't our first match. This is not our first match. I, I it's, it's, it. it's past. Yeah, it's past that. All right, fans, this is uh, the WPN Mr. Green doing the commentary, and the match is underway. Pandora versus Darcy Dixon, assistant pro women's champion facing the universal independent women's champion. As you can see, the match is on the way. Darcy Dixon in the uh, uh, neon green and black Pandora in the black and white. Darcy now has pressed the advantage. This is the culmination of uh, several meetings between these ladies and various promotions. This particular promotion, uh, or this particular bout is taking place on neutral ground as neither lady's title is on the line. Uh, this is at Southern Fried Championship Wrestling taking place just outside of Monroe, Georgia. And you can see right now Darcy Dixon has Pandora in a clam camel clutch position using the steel chain as a point of leverage and cranking back on the neck. Referee's getting down there trying to see whether she wants to quit. Remember in the dog collar match, all the uh, forms of victory are pinfall or submission. They will be counted. Steel chain will be attached at the, at the throat. As we can see there, 15 feet between them, so it will not be any escape from either lady. Duck underneath by Pandora as uh, Darcy wrapped her fist with the steel chain. A big forearm shot drives her back into the ropes. So Pandora is not preparing uh, too well right now. But uh, as stated, the rules are that uh, <coughs> pinfall submissions will be in play. There will be no counter or disqualification in this match. The steel chain is in play meaning that it will be used, as you've already seen, to inflict damage onto the opponent. Or in a case such as this, Darcy seems to be using it to apply additional leverage as she's hooking on a sharpshooter, tying the feet in the steel chain, preventing Pandora from being able to kind of break free from her grip. She's got that single leg crab in. And there's one of her feet slipped out, but she's still got it tied around the ankle of the uh, left leg. Pandora's struggling to find a way out of it. 
And all the writhing around that she's doing on the mat is causing Dixon to lose a little bit of grip. That might be the only hope that Pandora has in this. Quick slap to the back. Was able to push over. Now she rolls through. Going for a cover. Looked like she was trying for the surprise. Darcy turns it over too close to the ropes. Referee's having a hard time getting the pinfalls. As I am having a hard time calling the pinfalls. Looks like they want a little bit of a break from each other. But remember, they only have 15 feet to be able to escape one another's grip. There's a shot from our fan cam, the WPN fan cam. And now again, Dixon has Pandora on the ropes, using the steel chain to her advantage. The steel chain does make it rather difficult for the match to progress uh, as it normally would in a uh, typical pro wrestling fashion. You have a long, heavy, cumbersome chain wrapped around your throat. As you see Dixon up to the second rope, wrapping the fist, but the first shot. Looks like she was going for a fist drop. Pandora was able to get the feet up and stop that. And now she mounts Darcy Dixon, who's trying to cover up. Pandora's firing down big. Right hands on top of Dixon's face. You see, she's still covering up. I think she's caught a little bit of that chain to the side of her face. That's got to be a, a lingering pain. And now Pandora cranks in a, uh, a unique leg lock with the chain as the leverage point. Both of these ladies will use whatever they have to use in order to either secure the submission or the pinfall. Both ladies have had stellar matches over the course of the year. Pandora, who's been in steel cage matches, falls count anywhere, hardcore matches. And Darcy Dixon had a outstanding and brutal and bloody match against one of the queens of hardcore, Mickey Knuckles. If you haven't seen that match, I would suggest you look it up. Pandora wrapping Darcy into the ropes, using the chain around the throat, trying to choke her out. The referee doesn't have much authority in that, that position. Remember, the rules are somewhat laxed in a dog collar match. He's not able to, to uh, make the counts, even though he is making counts on them. I would tend to believe most of that is out of uh, instinct of being the referee. But in a dog collar match, these rules just simply do not apply. Dixon is now at a disadvantage point. Pandora walks over to the, to the next set of ropes. And now on top of cranker on the rope, she just wraps the chain around the throat and cranks back. And now she's taunting the fans who indeed were taunting her earlier. Dixon looks somewhat unconscious. That, that might be enough to get a pinfall right here. If Pandora can crawl over and get the, the cover. Dixon is still in the ropes. That is one rule that is still in play. I believe the, uh, the break of, you have to be pinning inside of the ring. There, there will be a break at the ropes. Pandora still looking to dish out the punishment. And for the fourth time on the fourth set of ropes, she ties the chain around the throat, cranking back, and this time in a really bad spot. And she can get more leverage. She can use gravity on her side in the way that she had her. She was suspended on the ropes and just used full body weight to crank back on the throat. Dixon has shown incredible resilience. She's still fighting back. Pandora now. Getting back over. Is she going for a cover? Looked like she might have been trying. Dixon was able to shoot her off. And again, you know, the chain wrapping itself around the legs, wrapping itself around their bodies, making it hard for them to be able to move like they instinctively would like to move. Quick kidney shot. With the steel chain right there on Darcy Dixon. Now a shot in the abdomen. Those quick rabbit shots right there on the side. 
Chain sticks, shoots it to the ropes, wraps the chain around, hooks her with a quick clothesline. And it did look like it came across the throat. It even looked like she got popped in the mouth. And as if the, it's like Pandora's looking for an no, she's looking for additional hardware. As if the, uh, the steel chain wasn't enough, she's going for a chair. Oh, man. <laughs> this was able to sit back and pull Pandora's face right there into the steel pose. That was a quick and great save by the Resistance Pro Women's Champion Darcy Dixon just dropped Pandora and yanking that chain and pulling her face first into the pose. And Pandora might be out. Which wouldn't be good in the case of trying to secure victory in the match. Remember the pinfall or the submission has to occur inside of the ring. Pandora could very well be dead weight right now. If she's gotten knocked out going against that steel post on the outside, Dixon already came out and dropped a, a fist drop on her with the uh, steel chain wrapped around. And she's calling. She's arguing with the referee. I think the referee's trying to institute some sort of count. She's saying that she that there shouldn't be a count. The matches, you know, the matches are pretty much a no DQ as, as anything goes. Now she's she's using the chain to pull Pandora up by her throat, which cannot be comfortable. And as you saw when Pandora was coming into the ring, there is a speckle of blood right there across the forehead, which is a terrible spot to be busted open because it will impair your vision and if the blood makes it down to the eyes, it really will impair your vision. The blood will sting. It's like having a bunch of sweat roll down the eyes on a hot summer day. Except that the that crimson will certainly uh, make it all the worse. Dixon's trying. Dixon's trying to get her up. Pandora is uh, dazed and confused and pretty much out on her feet. I think Darcy has this match. She should go for a pinball. Pandora struggling, literally struggling, just to maintain. As Darcy takes her face first all the way around the ring and just dropped her. And now Darcy is looking to go outside herself. She's yanking the chain, forcing Pandora over to the, uh, the near side where uh, Darcy is. She grabs a chair from the outside. Another chair has come into play. Now, this backfired on Pandora earlier. She went out for a steel chair to, to introduce additional hardware into the match, but it looks like it may work for Darcy Dixon, who has sworn to get revenge on Pandora, to end this grudge that they have. She hooks her up by the front face lock. Pandora's firing back. This drops in a forearm shot. Forearm shot by Darcy pops Pandora. Pandora doesn't even know what she's doing. <laughs> Got knocked out of chair. Comes back up to it. Wraps the chain around her arm. Stiff clothesline. Drills Pandora right there at the upper body region. Sends her down. She looks like she is out cold. This match is won. Darcy should just go for the cover right now. And she sets the chair back up. Back to the fan cam shot. That's the wide. And she's look, she's looking like she wants to finish Pandora with her own move. Pandora is the master of the DDT. She breaks out of it. She changes around. And Pandora, one quick shot, a DDT right there to the to the top of the chair, and that two, three. Pandora just stole one. She just stole one. Dixon had the match one, and Pandora snug it out. Although there was a heavy price to be paid on both women. Competing in a dog collar match isn't much fun, which Darcy found out. It's 15 feet of steel between you and your opponent. It's easily one of the more brutal matches in wrestling. But one that may be just as wild is the street fight. A pain and pleasure, and the Smothers Twisted Daughters, they've been locked in a blood feud that seemed like it had no end in sight. The Smothers Twisted Daughters wanted to win the Lewis Tag Team Championship, but in order to do this, they had to go through pain and pleasure. At that time, two of the Smothers were taken out. 
Maybelle was injured, and Isabel was, well, locked up. But that didn't stop Jessie Bell. She got Queen Destiny, one half of the Queens of Extreme, to step up to the challenge. And these four ladies went on to beat each other mercilessly. This is a West Georgia street fight. here before this match gets underway. This is for the Lewis Tag Team Championships and well, I guess unofficially the match has just begun. Queen Destiny and Jesse Bell smothers a bad, bad hit by uh, Jesse Bell. Took Green Monet's pace right into the bottom rope. But uh, Jesse Bell, who has replaced her sister Isabel uh, in this match as she was unavailable with one half of the Queens of Extreme, Destiny, who's going to be filling in in this street fight. As you can see, all the competitors have come in in uh, their street fighting clothes opposed to wrestling gear and going for early cover as Jesse Bell. Remember, balls will count anywhere in the building. As this match is now going underway and they have paired off. Destiny is uh, paired off with Pandora somewhere in the building. Nina Monet paired off against Jesse Bell. This match is to solidify the number one contendership of the Smothers Twisted Daughters. Again, Queen Destiny filling in for Isabel Smothers as Pandora's fighting from underneath, trying to get, get back at him because there was a little bit of history there with Destiny and she was beaten up, as you may have heard Jesse Bell say, by a pain and pleasure. They weren't always fan favorites, but in this particular event, they are the favorites of the people. Wearing the uh, No Stars and Bars shirts that they created and as a direct shot to the uh, Smothers Daughters. As Jezebel drags Nina Monet around ringside. Remember, anything goes in this match. Just took a hit in the head with a full bottle of Sprite. Because that can have solid impact depending on how full it, you know, the, the liquid was in there. Pandora comes in to save the day. Takes out Jezebel, takes a shot at uh, Jesse again on the ground with the, just hammered at the mix and she's taking kicks on it. Because the fans will need to remain out of the path of these four ladies as they go. As they, they are in full throttle mode right now. Destiny tosses Pandora into the chairs in the front row. I think she's just trampled over a set of them. First and second row. Monet is being choked out right here side of the ring. Pandora being beaten up in the stands. A lot of action going on. Hard to keep up. But we will do our best. 
And Renee Rick just clawing at the eyes of Jesse Bell to break it up. It is a long standing feud between the Smothers and Pain and Pleasure. Of course, again, Isabel, who is uh, locked up, as Jesse Bell Smothers has stated, not getting hit back. I don't think she could have done much better than to have one half of the Queen's Extreme. So it makes a unique pairing having one third of the Smothers Twisted Gorgeous, one half of Queen's Extreme coming in to uh, challenge Pain and Pleasure. Of course, this match. Should they win, then they will move on to a steel cage match. And that match will be for the actual Lewis Tag Team Championships as Queen Destiny just beating the, beating the life out of Pandora. She's limp. She's a limp noodle out there on the ground right now. I mean, she's been tossed to the steel chairs with forearm shots. Pandora is literally fighting with everything that she's got just to survive. She's got with his heart. Ooh, steel chairs. Didn't even get the chance to fold it up. Just cracked it across the back of Destiny. She absorbed that shot. Brought a knee lift right into Pandora. And they're headed over by the merchandise table. Face first as uh, Queen Destiny goes into the, the mat. See the fans here all standing up trying to get a glimpse of the action as they are spread out all over. There's not much tag team wrestling going on at the moment. As they are fighting their individual fights, Jesse Bell has a steel chair with a quick shot right into the abdomen, breaks it down, brings it across the back of Nina Monet. Remember, anyone that gives up or is pinned, and the falls will count anywhere in the building. Technically, oh, I was going to say Nina Monet could give up in that position right there, but Pandora watching that one. Good looking out with Pandora. Now she takes the steel chair. And she's trying to bring it over to uh, Destiny. Takes a shot, quick kick in Pandora's abs and makes her drop the chair. Jesse Bell's putting herself back together to relaunch the attack on Nina Monet. Here the, uh, the MC, the ring announcer over the intercoms, and please watch yourself. I don't want anybody to get hurt by the action. And again, they have found their way back to the merchandise table. As anybody standing around, quick reverse by Nina Monet, she was about to apply a double wrist lock to uh, Jesse Bell, but Monet was uh, cut off by Destiny. Pandora with a series of knee lifts to the face of Destiny. This is why they have been the Lewis Tag Team Champions for so long. But this makeshift pairing of Destiny and Jesse Bell seems to be doing extraordinarily well against the champions in this street fight environment. And now now fighting back, giving us a back to a few drops, Destiny to the ground. Jesse Bell choking out Nina Monet with her foot. And they have all come ready for a fight. Destiny has been left laying on the ground. This may be the opening that Pain and Pleasure needs in order to secure the win. Because Pandora clawing out the eyes of Jesse Bell just enough to break the uh, the attention that she had on Nina Monet. Nina's down. And now the fight has turned to Jesse Bell and Pandora. Pandora hooks in for the DDT. This will do it. No one's kicked out of the DDT. Oh. I was going to say, no one has kicked out of a DDT yet, but here comes Destiny. She cuts that off. Good partnership by Queen Destiny. Comes in, and now she's just beating on Pandora. Nina Monet is trying to get back into the ring. Shoots into the ropes. Over the top as Jezebel brings the top rope down. Nino's trying to come in to help, and again, Destiny being a, she may be the MVP of this match so far. She has come in and she has wrecked house, last minute replacement, and she is doing a stellar job in what she's what she's brought to this match for her her uh, partner of the evening. Jezebel's got a steel chair on the outside and just caught out the corner. Screen oh just whacked Pandora across the side of the head, put her down and caught out in his eyes as he come on the floor. A three count and 
Well, I can't say it smothers twisted daughters of one, but Jesse Bell Smothers and her partner of the night, Destiny, have won this match, which now means the Smothers Twisted Daughters are eligible to go into the steel cage against Pandora and Nina Monet, pain and pleasure for the championships. And Jesse Bell is not done. She's got this, she's got Pandora's belt. This has gone far beyond being just a typical wrestling match. Bell is wrong, the match is over. But Jesse is still, still looking to inflict pain. You can hear the bell ringing again right now. She is apparently looking for revenge. Remember this match, though, the match that preceded this pain and pleasure injured, uh, quite possibly permanently, the, uh, the third Smothers Twisted Daughter, Maybell Smothers. She will no longer be wrestling, according to uh, Jesse. Nina tried to get in to help, and there again, Queen Destiny doing her job, cutting her off and pile driver. Puts Nina Monet down and apparently out. Nina is unconscious. As they are still, still putting a beating on pain and pleasure. And there it is, I guess, the official raising of the hands. The, the match is over, the, and it has been won by Destiny and Jesse Bell Smothers. Uh, despite what you may be hearing from the uh, ring announcement. Oh! Okay. Well, despite what you heard from the ring announcement, I should just read the microphone. This is not a championship match. These belts for me and my sister, and everybody knows blood's thicker than water. You cannot trust Jesse Bell. Who can I say? I am Tracy Smothers' daughter. When you step in the ring with me, everybody dies. One of the honors given to the ladies of the ring was helping out one of the legends of the business. Joyce Grable, an iconic competitor, had some medical issues in 2013, and everyone was eager to help. Nine ladies gathered together in the main event, a gauntlet battle royale for Joyce's benefit. Who will walk out the winner of the Grappling for Grable battle royale? We are four ladies into the gauntlet battle royale. Participants right now, Sabrina the Wonder Woman, who's hammering uh, BB right down the ropes. Sabrina, the uh, woman in the black, excuse me, the blue and the stars. The all black woman over there is the great Cheyenne, who is currently trying to voice her opponent in the Boston Crab. She sent Kitty Captain to the red pipe, so they were force her way out, trying to fly an uh, ankle lock to the great Cheyenne. This matchup is a gauntlet battle royal, which means a new competitor will come out. Approximately one minute, every one minute and 30 seconds from the match. Entering the ring right now is Miss Rachel from the UK. That's the Shady with a great time. There's going to be a lot of action to call in this matchup. Going after her, one of her most hated enemies in Sex Kitty Cat. Miss Rachel has her plastered up against the ropes right now. As of yet, there has been no eliminations in this match thus far. Ms. Rachel is now hoisted the to make Gordy first elimination. Since Kitty Kathy has been eliminated, and, and remember, in this matchup, in this gauntlet, all eliminations are legal. Over the top rope, pitfall as the missions, they all count. Last woman standing in this match will be the winner. Big shot of Miss Rachel. Remember, Cheyenne is the, uh, the unfortunate person that drew number one. He's been in this match uh, longer than anyone so far. You see Sabrina firing back up there in the corner. Of course, this match is uh, for the benefit of legendary competitor Joyce Grable. Of the women that are in this ring right now, the only person that has actually competed with Joyce Brable is Sabrina. 
Here we see Jessica Whitmore. She comes in and she charges right after the woman that I was just talking about. She brings her to Wonder Woman. Now, DB's back up on her feet, taking on the uh, great Cheyenne, hammering there on the ropes, giving uh, Miss Rachel a breather. Rachel goes out to DB. Excuse me, Whitmore. A lot of ladies in this match. A lot of ladies. Whitmore, who just entered the ring, is now being subject to uh, vicious shoulder blocks in the corner. And now a double team by Sabrina and Miss Rachel. And it looks like she's out and over the top. Second elimination. Miss Rachel, who's come in and just fired them out. Looks like she is a woman on a mission. Sabrina representing uh, the old school of pro wrestling. I mean that in the fondest way possible. She has a lot of experience in the ring and probably knows more about wrestling than, or has forgotten more about wrestling than most of these young ladies know. And here comes Queen Destiny. Typically speaking, she is one half of the Queen of Extreme with her partner, Lady Vixen. But in tonight's match, she is going in this thing alone. Uh, one half of the MLOW Women's Tag Team Champions. But she has no tag team partner in this event this evening. It's all her. She's going out to be the Cheyenne going out to Rachel. And Rachel's fair pretty well. And now Sabrina, surprisingly, comes to the aid of the great Cheyenne. Four of in the corner. Queen Destiny, who's a... Uh, oh, my goodness. Cheyenne and Sabrina just chucked this Rachel out over the top rope. That took me by surprise. But you can see here we got Destiny calling for aid to Phoebe. Earlier in the match, she took quite a, a triple team already. And now this, she's thinking of the game, but like they're going for a, a double suplex. There it is. Leg drop by the great Cheyenne. Let's see who's coming in right now. We got former NWA Women's Champion, Tiffany Rocks, entering the ring and going after uh, Sabrina, the Wonder Woman. It looks like Tiffany is looking for the elimination fast and in a hurry. Great Cheyenne and Destiny double teaming BB. And remember, in this match, of all eliminations are legal pitfall submissions over the top rope onto the floor. They all count. And it looks like they're going for an over the top rope elimination. DB is out. And another high five by the great Diane, but immediately turns on Death. Really surprised that Cheyenne had much left in her tank. She was the unfortunate draw of number one. She's been here for the longest amount of time and she's still going strong. A kick out by Sabrina and it looks like she's grabbing the hair trying to, trying to get away from Tiffany Rocks. Tiffany is yet another young lady who is uh, part of a tag team. She normally works with the Rockettes with uh, her uh, normal partner, Rock and Roll Roxy. But much like Tiffany, she is in this thing alone. A splash by the rock, splash on rock, and comes 50 days. I believe that she is number nine. I think she is drawing the final, final number. She comes in swinging the haymaker. Misty Dan is an uh, invitee from Southern States Wrestling. She's going for the cover. Two, three. Sabrina's eliminated. That's the first pinfall in this uh, battle royal. But this is an open invitation gauntlet battle royal. Again, Mr. Dance comes from Southern States Wrestling. She has, been, she has been the perennial women's champion of that promotion. And if you've never seen her wrestle before, she is uh, quite the brawler where she has to be. And here comes Tiffany Rocks. Low drop kick. Nails are right on the button. I think she may be trying for a cover. No. Nikki James is fighting from underneath with those big right hands. And if I had to say anything about it, she's probably the oh, strongest 
right hand in women's wrestling. Great Cheyenne is uh, picking up some punishment by Destiny. Big shot. Destiny, who's uh, typically used to being in a, in a no hold park environment, this may work well for her. There are no real rules to speak of in this matchup. Today sends rocks into the turnbuckle. Now it's, it's like she's calling for a, a double team. Quick shot right there to add in the second one. Third one. Definitely shoot. Diane right into Tiffany Rocks. I don't think that Tiffany will win against that, that matchup. Diane's a much stronger individual. Just sweeps off her feet. Catches her with a knee right there pretty low. Just stomping out that ankle. Roll up by Mr. James. Two, three. Second pitfall. By James, and, and there's that strength advantage from the great Cheyenne. Body slam says the woman of England is stepping down to no. Cheyenne's complaining about the count. Looked like she uh, was expecting a three, but she had to expect a little bit more fight out of Rocks. Rocks is a, a former women's champion. Walk around in a big power slam. Hook the leg. One, two, three. Mr. James has been waiting to circle around Cheyenne, and now we have an interesting matchup here. We have the number one draw facing off against the number nine draw. The first and last competitors of this match, and it speaks well of the great Cheyenne to have uh, endured all eight competitors against her, and now they are training fists. You would think that James in this position has the advantage. She's been in there the least amount of time. If I had to go for strength under a normal working environment, I would say the great Cheyenne would have her beat. But this is not a normal wrestling environment. And I said it before and I can say it again, Mr. Dan, if for my money has the best right hand in women's wrestling, kicking the guts by great Cheyenne voice. James up and that's that strength that I was talking about, walking her around the ring. And Diane takes it down with a Samoan drop. Two. Like Cheyenne's going for pitfalls. Not trying to take out a ring. Headbutt right now to the uh, goal. They the goal for Mr. James. That might have rung a bell. Cheyenne's going to the top rope. Comes off the top, Centon bomb, and that may do it. Hooks the leg, hooks it in tight. Two, three. Great Cheyenne has just won the first grapple for Grable Battle Run. Very good by the Great Cheyenne. She managed to pull this thing out. Walking in is number one. Goes coast to coast. There you see the winner, the Gauntlet Battle Royal. That's, you don't need to scramble off camera. Diane, who, uh, <laughs> not really a, a big favorite amongst the crowd, but she shows her respect to Joyce Grable, a uh, legend of the industry. And uh, there's your winner right there, stomping off to the back. We go from a cluster of multiple women to a one-on-one -on -one technical match between two ladies who are going to be big stars in the future. Devin Nicole and the last pure athlete, Jordan Grace, meet up in a confrontation ready to prove who's going to take the next steps in their path to greatness. Okay, there you can see uh, Ms. Nicole is becoming a bit impatient. <laughs> looks looks a little bit bored over there hanging on the ropes, but okay, there we go. There's the music. And here's a face that we uh, on this channel are pretty familiar with. We've seen her work a couple of times. Miss Jordan Grace, again, another one of the young ladies who was uh, very highly sought after, highly thought of on the uh, 
women's wrestling circuit. And this should be a pretty fair, pretty strong contest between Jordan Grace and Devin Nicole. Uh, as I stated on a couple of other shows, uh, Devin Nicole has had high marks spoken of her by other individuals, her colleagues, uh, including Ronnie Nicole and this natural Heather Malberg, or Heather Patera, sorry. There she is. Looks a bit taken that people are actually booing her. There she is, and like normal, showing the guns. Jordan Grace illustrating that uh, that physique. Of course, referee Mason checking him out. Doesn't Jordan Grace didn't have a problem, but apparently Devin Nicole does. Does not want to be back. And uh, the referee is not really doing much to uh, enforce that, but the bell is rung, the match is underway, and uh, this contest should be quite interesting to stay least stuck underneath in the rear waist lock by Jordan Grace. And as strong as she is, and normally I give her many marks for being the stronger competitor in the match, I think the leverage advantage will neutralize that by Devin Nicole as she's trying to pick her up. And Grace takes that rear waist lock and turns it into a, a arm drag, modified arm drag, now applying the arm bar on the mat. Hooks her up, trails her too. Oh, thank God Nicole was ready for that one. I'd be backing her off. Okay, you, you may not have heard her, but she said like she might have to do some work today, and the, uh, Jordan Grace agrees, but they're both putting their hair in ponytail. The sign that it is time to get serious in this ring right now. There they go, circling each other. For the collar number tie up. Jordan takes it over to a side headlock. Very quick. Elbows into the, into the abdomen. He's off with a quick reversal into a snap mare by Grace. Beautiful maneuver it's over top of her. Ducks underneath with a quick slide and a big arm drag right back to the arm bar. Does uh, Jordan Great. Uh, whatever strength that she may have normally utilized in previous matches that we've seen, she's not illustrating right now. She's going for a very technical match and thus far winning. Arm drag. Back into the arm bar. Neutralizing Devin Nicole, center of the ring. Cole is looking pretty frustrated right now. She's trying to get herself back up to her vertical base. Now Nicole, uh, Jordan Grace. Nicole is getting tied up by Jordan Grace. She has a hammerlock applied using her legs to work the application. Roll into a cradle. Cole's able to roll right back out of it. Roll back into a cradle and she was able to get out. Devin Nicole is not happy. Oh, I was going to say she's not happy, but she just uh, found her happy spot with two elbows to Jordan Grace's face. And now she's uh, checking her shoulder. Grace is sizing up. Flip it to the corner. Spear! Devin Nicole explodes out of the corner with a spear and the gun to hook the leg for cover. Two. That's the sign that uh, Nicole is always sticking in that ring. I think she may have caught Jordan Grace uh, in a show-off maneuver. Had it connected, it would have been highly impactful, but unfortunately, Devin was able to cut it off. And now she is in charge, drinking Grace's throat across the second rope. Grace is uh, looking like he may be in dire straight right now as Devin is pressing the advantage now to foot across the throat in the turnbuckle, has her in the corner. Tots into the abdomen region. You gotta figure that Devin Nicole is gonna be looking to press that advantage as she shoots her hard into the turnbuckles and she just falls right there into the center of the ring. Nicole's uh, 
Picking it back up. Four-on shot right to the base of the jaw. Trying to make a charge in, and the same thing that uh, caught Jordan Grace before is now the same thing that gets Devin Nicole hit, hit at the top of the head. That quick charge in was not good for either of these young ladies. Devin's out at the two, up on their feet. Close line, and a stiff shot sends Grace down to the mat. Dragging her by the hair. Referee's making the count, but he hasn't caught the five to break it, and Devin is very aware of the five count. Utilizing it to the fullest drop. And a nice one at that. Didn't even give her a lot of room to back off. It was that drop kick in the front, and turnbuckles in the rear. Didn't have anywhere to go. The feet right across the throat again. Clearly, Devin Nicole is going to do what she has to do. To score a victory here, setting her up, looks like you may be going for a super play. Grace is uh, fighting out of that. Four up shot to the back. Of that flip. Oh. Well, Devin had a, uh, a counter to the flip, but it wasn't enough of a counter. She tried to get a vertical splash. Came down on her tailbone and looks to be in staggering pain. But she is still aware of what's going on as she kicks Jordan Grace with a jawbreaker sending her down. Grace is now out of control and Devin is back in as she pushes the skin down onto the, uh, the throat of Jordan Grace. Vertical slash onto the back now. Wasn't able to get it on the front end, but not the top edges on the rear. Devin seems to be working a very methodical pace. Not wanting to turn this thing on into a, a higher way. She's, she's got it under control, and I think she likes it this way. Likes the pacing here. Somewhat of a modified camel flip rolled over as Jordan hooks the leg. Devin Nicole did not have that one in there good, but she got a good reverse elbow onto the jaw of Grace. Grace tries to tie herself up in the ropes, and it's not helping. Uh, Nicole comes in, crushing her feet across the mouth. Drags Grace back out to the center. And now they see the trash talking, just sitting down on her, and a slap in the, in the face. That's not going to really do anything, but it's going to cause her to be humiliated. Quick shot in the gut. Grace is trying to fight herself back up. Big shot. And a shot sent back to her. These ladies are going to be pretty hard hitting and, and a blatant choke. Blatant choke in the corner. But again, Devin Nicole very aware of the rules. No, she has to count of five. But now she's saying that she's done. That quick snap over neck breaker. Move made famous by one Kurt Henning, a.k.a. Mr. Perfect. Devin Nicole has done her homework, and she has studied it. She's going up to the uh, second term, but was sitting on the top. Grace is coming in, tries to hook her with the legs, and then it was enough. Didn't catch it good, but it's enough to bring her down, cause Nicole to lose her footing and fall over. So despite the fact that the head scissors didn't apply well, the end result was the same. Cole came down, and now Grace is rising up. Looks like she, she may have been going for her variation of the spear. But Nicole is too smart for that. Rolls out of the ring, and now she's trying to catch her breath and get a breather. So the Grace isn't going to allow it to happen. Down to the rope. Big plot, man. Remember, there are no mats outside of the AWE rings. So a soft landing is not in the equation for either young ladies. Great. Keeps her back into the ring. Now we have Jordan Grace trying to press the advantage. Getting her ready. Drop toe hold. A first into the second turnbuckle does Devin Nicole, and here comes Jordan Grace with double knees, right to the back, into the rope. Elbow. Now she shoots back into the ropes again. Had to do that reverse body scissor, and gets her with an ace crusher. Some people like to call it a stunner. Double leg. 
but it is not enough to take down the box. Evan Nicole is in bad position right now. Not anymore. Compete. And that may be it. This drill throw to Grace right there in the mouth, a place that she's been working all match. But that upper body strength of Jordan Grace was enough to get her out, save the match, keep her going. A roll through, hooks the leg, Jordan Grace, reversal, tight. It was all the leverage that Devin Nicole needed. Quick, quick reversal to the roll through the modified victory roll of Jordan Grace and Devin Nicole steals the win. There you hear it, the announced winner, Devin Nicole. The phrase was once coined that we are destined to do this forever. I'm not sure if there's two women in wrestling that this doesn't fit better than Dementia DeRose and Aja Super Pereira. These two ladies have been partners, they've been opponents, but they always seem to cross each other's path. And as long as they're capable, they are ready and willing to wage war that is never ending. Here's a match that most assuredly isn't their first and definitely will not be their last. It is the WPN presenting to you another great matchup by one of our new partners, Classic Pro Wrestling from Bill Rick and Georgia. This is Mr. Green calling the action and entering the ring right now on your screens is the one and only strange in the range, Dementia DeRose. She's uh, shouting to the fans out here, some of which have been giving her lip since she's walked in, but I'm not really sure that she's all that concerned. I need to see her getting herself uh, kind of revved up and head button the uh, top turbuckle. It seems to be becoming her uh, little in ring ritual. Along with praising her Lorena Bobby, she likes to carry around. For those that don't know, it's that knife. And I want to be clear, kids do not go around playing with knives. I wouldn't want anybody to uh, fall into strange and deranged category. But uh, this particular matchup is a, uh, a match that both ladies, we see the opponent right now, Audra Super Pereira, coming into the ring. Ring side, I should say. It's a matchup that both of them have uh, had before. This is a rivalry that is ever expanding. They have fought, competed against, and sometimes with each other throughout the Southeast region. And uh, it seems to be that neither side is willing to give in to the other. And this is another chapter in that long-standing feud between these two. Oddly enough, as I just stated, sometimes they have wound up on the uh, same side of the fence on occasion. Uh, it's amazing to me that they're, that they're able to do that the times that they're able to do it. But as we all know, wrestling makes for strange partnerships and strange bedfellows. In this particular instance, there is no partnership. The, uh, the rivalry continues. And uh, I would think that in Dementia's case, the hatred runs deep. There's Red Lee trying to get the, uh, her weapon of destruction out of her hand. And it's no toy, ladies and gentlemen. That is a a knife capable of causing bodily harm, and we don't need that in the, uh, in the wrestling ring. I'm sure Aja Pereira will thank the referee for his discretion. The bell has rung. Super Pereira is getting herself revved up there. Dementia the Rose already deadly focused on the task at hand. The task at hand is continuing her path of destruction, which if you have seen here on this channel, you've seen her go through a number of people. If you go gone through her Facebook page, you've seen even more uh, names, including Pandora, including Amber O'Neill, including a rookie, Kiara Hogan, and then even in a losing effort against a Mickey Knuckles, which you can find here on this, this uh, channel. Her nightmare or has continued to grow. I call it the path of destruction. Her term is building her nightmare. 
Now there it is. He's looking for the lockup with her uh, greatest rival, Oz Pereira, who turns into a oh, wait, excuse me, wrist lock. Soon as she went for that wrist lock, she just grabbed her by the throat, tosses her back. You can hear Asha saying that. She was uh, accepting blame for that, allowing that to happen. So that was her. That was it, real waist lock. Rose trying to force her way out of it. There's an example of the uh, superior strength of Dimension Rose is able to uh, break that grip and force Aja Superpower off of her. These two ladies know each other extremely well, and I doubt there's going to be anything that one is going to do to the other that's going to surprise you know, their, their opponent in this matchup. Aja goes right in, tosses in several forearm shots. Takes her in, reversal by the Rose. She goes into the turnbuckle, charges in, catches the elbow. Right back to the side, headlock, neutralizing Aja. Aja neutralizing Dimension Rose, dead center of the ring. Stiff shot into the abdomen. Shoots Super Prayer off, catches her. Backbreaker. And now she suspends her, stretching around on that knee. And tosses her down to the mat. With so little regard. Now she crawls over to the ropes. Into the rose. Headbutt. And stiffer. Tosses her across. Looks like Dementor the Rose has already established dominance in this match. Full control as Aja is trying to gain her bearings on the other side. Dementor has allowed her to. She doesn't seem very threatened in this situation as she now has gripped both wrists using the ropes as a means of uh, leverage almost yanking her forearms away from her elbows blatant bite but she's not crazy enough to where she doesn't recognize that she has to break that count of five stop biting at the four she goes into the ropes big clothesline Almost a Stan Hansen lariat-like clothesline. Caught her right there across the chest, the base of the chin. Impact on the back, just caught it all the way around. Hodge Pereira getting up to her feet, fighting, kicking it up her region there. Tried to go for a drop kick, caught a little bit of a graze. Came down hard. Hodge Super Pereira looks to be in trouble. Dimension Rose still in charge, still dominating in this matchup right now. And she's stretching her face. Rose. The nightmare continues to grow. Not about hair. Referee's giving the warning. Pulling her up. Now she has in fireman's carry position. Possibly a Samoan drop. She likes to do it, but Ajbert gets out. Neck breaker. Pulls her back over. Perhaps she can score a pin. No. Dimension Rose able to get out of there. And now Aja, now trying to get Dimension back up to her feet. Hopefully they inflict more damage, but not enough. A rake of the eyes, and a blatant rake of the eyes right there across Aja Pereira's face. Dimension has become quite adept at using her environment for her advantage. Earlier we saw her use the ropes to kind of yank her arms and now she's using it again as a leverage move for almost like modified kind of clutch right there across the second rope. You think that uh, Pereira would be stretched back and forth. She's got to get herself at least center of the ring and, it, and now DeRose is, is just joined with some of the fans, some of these people that who were giving her lift when she came in earlier, the same fans that she screamed at top of her lungs and she's being introduced. The Mitchell the Rose in the recent weeks has been on such a tear. You have to think that her confidence level must be through the roof. And it shows that everything that she's doing, her poise, her walk, her attitude about this match in general, she's not even giving Pereira the real time of day. She turned her back on her. She charged in, caught her with a back kick. Double knees right to the, to the chins. That may be enough. I'm gonna say that uh, 
lack of attention to detail, that lack of attention to her opponent might have been enough to cause her the loss, but she was able to kick out. Pereira trying to press the advantage, shoots her to the ropes, goes for a spin heel kick, rolls ducks underneath and just shoves her off. Again, not much either one of these ladies is going to do that. It's going to surprise her. The Rose shot her in, but Aja caught herself. But the Rose ran in for the spear. No concern over her own well-being. And she takes both of them out to the floor. And you see with the camera shot, there are no mats here. And anybody that's been in the gym will know that a gym floor is pretty unforgiving. Big forearm shot right there across the top of the back and an elbow to combat that. Headbutt by Super Pereira. Big fist right there to the top of the head of Dimension Rose and Pereira's actually, she's working up the advantage. Rose actually looked like she was tossed a little loopy there for a second. Pereira gets in, breaks the count, rolls back out. Now she's out on the apron. And it looks like she's setting her up. Runs across. Kick right to the side of the head. Does Aja Super Pereira to her greatest rival, Dementia DeRose. And as we've talked about DeRose's background, Aja Super Pereira must be noted as well. For whatever reason, she seems to have been a magnet for, uh, shall we say, competitors of questionable sanity. Dimension DeRose being top of that list. Tragedy and another, Grundy another. She has a future match with Mitchell Belmont. She uh, seems to draw a lot of these. Pair up on the second rope. High cross body. Will it be enough? Two count. Dimension DeRose is out. Elijah looks like she's questioning what else she's got to do to try to put her, uh, her opponent down. Get the fans into it, man. Getting the, the troops to rally, so to speak. Forearm shot. Now DeRose just absorbed it and tosses on right back at her. And Aja Pereira absorbs the shot as well, comes back, and now they're just slinging shots back and forth. Pereira, big kick. Rose hasn't gone off her feet a second one. And that one dropped the giant. Dropped the monster. Puts her down. Rose has not and will not give up. There's a little bit of frustration down Super Pereira's face. She's got to get herself focused. Find that one big maneuver that's going to score the win. As I stated earlier, I don't think that either one of these ladies are going to do anything that's going to surprise the other. I think it's going to be a case of whomever can nail the big move first. Back up to her feet. Rose breaks free. Body slam. Pereira is down. And you can see the pain etched on her face. Hooks the leg. Two. Kick out and a big kick out by Super Pereira. She still has fight left in her. And this is the first time that the Dimension Rose has shown frustration. Only her rival, only her greatest rival could be anyone that could drive her to that point. She just mounted herself on top of her. Now she's just raining down big right hands at close proximity right there to the side of the face and ended it with a wreck of the eyes. Dimension Rose drawn with the referee again. I'm sure she would not like to admit it, but Aja has caused frustration. Double axe handle right to the back. She's mounting her on the back. Vertical splash right there to the small of the back. Jumps up, comes down again. Pereira is damaged and hurt. And I just saw the uh, clapping of the backside, which has signaled in the past damnesia. If Pereira gets hit with that, it will be over. 
to the best of my knowledge, no one has been able to come out of Damnesia yet. She's charging up. She's getting ready. Across the ring. She misses. Spear. Pearl got the cover. Two. That might have been the best chance that Aja Supera had in being able to put Mitchell the Rose Ring. She's got to find something. She's got to go for that big move and gamble. Right, she's aiming for something coming off of the, uh, the second or the top rope, perhaps. Mitchell the Rose comes back up to her feet, head bats. A series of them gets her up into the five and carry. There's that strange and deranged drop that, that Fiverr's carry that she likes to do. Prayer doesn't know where she is, and now DeRose is sizing up again for a second attempt. That Damnesia. And Damnesia scores the mark. Will it be enough? Two, three. Oh, Oz Prayer shot the arm up. But she shot the arm up too little, too late. Just after the three count. That was a valiant effort by Aja Pereira. Shows that she had a little bit of life, a little fight left in her, but it was just too little, too late. There is the smirk. The look of pleasure. And the scream of victory by the bench of the road. to our final match of the video. In women's pro wrestling, one of the top names in the circuit belongs to the incredibly talented Casey Carlisle. A former NWA women's champion, she's made a name for herself collecting championships in almost every promotion she's been in. Her opponent today is one that the WPN is very high on. The Black Widow, Brianna Call, becomes more and more deadly every time we see her in the ring. In today's competition, it's a classic matchup between the established talent and the rising star. In this match, the shots these two put on each other become extremely hard. So make sure you listen close. We need a Black Widow facing off against the uh, former NWA Women's World Champion is here right now and the blue trunks going out shaking hands with all the fans is Casey Carlisle. Which is a unique situation for Carlisle. Most often times when people get to see her perform, she is uh, not necessarily on the uh, fan favorite side of things. Most people tend to boo her for whatever reason. And, and Carlisle has admittedly taken a very aggressive approach, uh, particularly when she's been the champion. But in Georgia, she is revered. She has not done anything to uh, stain that uh, image as of yet. Her opponent is just sizing her up. Bri Brianna, the Black Widow, is just checking her out here. The bell is rung. All out trying to get the uh, fans into this thing. Be an interesting matchup. Black Widow charges in, tries to take a leg, but she misses him. Tossed by Carlisle. Clothesline. These two young ladies uh, look to be relatively close in strength level, out, out of size at least. Carlisle takes him to the corner, gets up in the second turn, but now she's firing off this. Right there to the side of the face, and the Black Widow just tosses her down, breaks her away before she makes that count of 10. Now she shoots off into the ropes. Nope, reversal. Here comes Carl out, charges across the ring. Oh! And she caught a wet spot. A quick slip up, and then she's got her ankle. Carlisle is down, and she is hurt. And she's hurt badly. But that is not going to stop the Black Widow from, from pushing ahead. And now Carla's trying to fight back, even though she's at a disadvantaged position, trying to fight off of her knees, a quick rake of the eyes. But that brief moment, the Black Widow seemed to be uh, 
hesitant, but no, no longer is she uh, wasting time, a slap in the face. So now Casey has to fight the uh, pain of her ankles, and she has to fight the pain that the Black Widow's inflicting on the top of her head. It's hard to say, and Carlisle fights back, forearm shot. Ooh, back elbow, a very stiff back elbow at that. Carlisle's getting the, uh, her win back with her. Reversal by the Black Widow, tossing to Rooks, close line. Sets her down and sets her down hard. Hooks the leg, two. So trying to find that extra, extra bit of strength. Black Widow comes charging down with a forearm shot right down the top of the back. Hooks her into a camo clutch. She might get a, she might score a win here, and she might score it early. This would have to be constituted as a big upset for the Black Widow to win over the uh, former world's champion. And uh, I do believe that Carlisle ranks within the top 10, top longest reigns of the NWA Women's World Championship in history. So that uh, should give you some idea of her credibility. That was a short strength right there. She picked her up and walked her into the back of the ropes. It's dropping two. The widow's able to get out. There's Carlisle. Back up to the turnbuckle, shoots her off. Now comes in with a splash. And bad ankle or not, she is still trying her best. She charges back across, misses. Black Widow is able to gingerly step out of the way and catches her with these big right hands right there in the corner. She's just rocking Carlisle. Snap Mare sends her down, sets her right there in the almost center of the ring. She kicks her with a kick in the back and now she's again with a submission maneuver. Locking those arms up, forcing that knee into the spine. And you can see she's giving Carlisle space and then drilling her back into the knee. So she's not just getting pressure on the arms and the elbows, but she's getting hits on her spine right now. Carlisle trying to force her way out of it, but not able to do it. And there she is again. Smart maneuver by the Black Widow. You can tell that she has been working herself and training hard. She has been... Uh, Dealing with a lot of different competition lately, but this may be the stiffest competition that she's had so far in Casey Carlisle. Carlisle has dealt with a lot of opponents. Charges in, leg drop. Two. And the hook of the leg, unable to score the win. Forearm shot right there on the side of the jaw. And now the widow is draping her out over the top ropes choking out her opponent, but she is smart. She knows the break before the five. In the ropes. Straight sidewalk slam, hooks the legs, go for cover, two, no. The Black Widow is now trying to press the advantage. These ladies have been uh, firing off big hits and big kicks at each other. She's just grabbing the hair of Casey Carlisle. Taking her up to the top turnbuckle. Face first, right into it. Here she goes again. Walks her from one turnbuckle head first to the next head first. You have to imagine that Carlisle is in a great deal of pain catching that wet spot earlier. And now being literally walked around all four corners, but she stops on the fourth one and takes the Black Widow right in. And now it is a case of turnabout. It is fair play, and it's Casey Carlisle taking her to all four corners. And I would imagine that, as I said with Carlisle earlier, the Black Widow must have some stinging pains uh, on her head as well. Isaiah charges, catches her with that running knee lift right there in the abdomen, and that shot just drops Carlisle in the corner. Widow charges back across. She is in. Oh! We saw it earlier in the match. 
earlier in the night, I should say, kicking the guts. Somebody came charging in with their backside. Black Widow decided to do it too, clothesline. And that may be it. One, two. There is a common theme of the night right there, a rake of the eyes. As uh, Jesse Ventura once said, it will break any hole, and it has been proven that to be true tonight. The eye rake has broken many a hole and broken many a pinfall just in this event alone. It stands on the admin, Casey Carlisle's in bad, bad shape. Looks like the Black Widow is literally trying to pick her apart. Quick charge and a roll up. The Widow almost allowed herself to become distracted with some people on the outside and almost lost. That running sledgehammer to the back of Carlisle's uh, lower, lower back. She made a pay for it with that hit. Kicks into a camel clutch, excuse me, cobra clutch. Kicks into a side wrestling leg super back. Both legs. You have to give her credit. And she is hooking in both legs, trying to score that win. Now applies a hammerlock with the legs. Modified abdominal stretch right there on the mat. She may be able to score a uh, submission here. I said it before, I said it again. I would tend to believe that a submission victory at this point would constitute a big upset to, for uh, the Riddle to win one over the former world's champion. That might have win all together might constitute an upset. Suplex, a quick snap. Look the legs, two, not quite. These ladies again. Trade in the big shots, and there was a big one right down the top of Carlisle's head, and now one in the small of the back. It has been the top of the head, it has been the back, it has been the legs. Carlisle that has been uh, really painted on with the, with the bullseye. The first elbow by Carlisle, I mean, they are really trading shots. Carlisle's hanging up by the ropes. I'm not sure that she would be on her feet if the ropes weren't nearby. And now here's the Black Widow tied up into the top ropes, trying to gain a little bit of an advantage using the ropes for leverage on that, uh, that pull. Takes Carlisle back in, and she's trying to fight back. And it's uh, lefts and rights right there in the uh, abdomen. Now across the back, and kicking the head. You cannot tell me that these women do not fight, and they do not fight hard. Black Widow and Casey Carlisle uh, quite literally look like they're killing each other in this match. There's a choke, a couple of quick slaps across the face, and now a blatant, really blatant choke right in front of the referee, not caring about the count. I think she just broke on five. The referee giving him a little bit of leeway. Sledgehammer to the back again. Quick stop. Quick, short stop. Not a lot of wind up to it, but it was a lot of impact. Now she sets her up. Looks like she's going for a suplex. There's the block by Carlisle. The second block by Carlisle. And she takes it down into a small package. Hooks the legs. Two. Not enough. Keep down the Black Widow. Charges in with a clothesline. Nope, she turns it into a, a quick choke. Drapes across the ropes. Shoulder blocks and a series of them right down the ropes. Black Widow had nowhere to go. Takes over the snap Meredith's call out. Now she goes to the ropes. Clothesline. That may do it. Hook in the leg. Not enough. Black Widow is showing a lot of intestinal fortitude. Say what you will about her. She might not be the most liked person in this event, but she is hanging in there and she is hanging tough. Breaks the hole. Series of right hands to the side of Carlisle's head. Shoots into the ropes. Reversal by Casey. Taking the guts. Face plant. Looks like Carlisle doesn't have enough to roll over and try to score the, the uh, pinfall. 
I would think that if she had it in her to actually get over there and press her body on top of it and hold the shoulders down, she may have scored the win. She's trying to find something in her right now just to get back into this fight. She's getting onto her feet, as is her opponent, the Black Widow. She comes in, hooks into a side headlock. Reversal, forearm shot, the second one. Make it number three. Shoots her into the ropes. Big clothesline. And again, sets the Black Widow down to the canvas. Reverse elbow. And another elbow. She has scored heavily with those elbow shots. Going for the cover. No. And again, a rake of the eyes. Broke that pinfall very easily by thumbing in the eye. Right hand to the top of Carlisle's head. Now she takes Casey into the ropes. No, another reversal, knee lift, and then she's going for a pet maneuver, that double DDT, double arm DDT. And that should do it. Hooks both legs, and she scores the three. Casey Carlisle comes away with the victory over a very game Black Widow. I would say with real ease that as tough as that match was, the Widow deserves a rematch and a chance to go up against Carlisle again. She made Casey work for it and scored that victory. The end result is the same though. Casey Carlisle walks away with the, uh, the victory here in a fan favorite town for Casey Carlisle. You can see that she's got the fans on the side to stand up on the beat. That may be a little different when she uh, takes her trips up to New York, but as it stands right now, we applaud her. As the people out there are applauding her right now. We, we like to call that the Jerry Lawler effect. As he was very beloved in Memphis and at times needed everywhere else in the world. The strange thing is that this isn't her hometown. But there it is, folks. Carlisle is the victor, and there's the uh, unfortunate end right there for the Black Widow. Thanks to all you guys for watching. We look forward to giving you more videos with all new content and matches. It's thanks to your continued support that we're able to bring you these ladies that you know and love and let them continue to showcase their talent for you. To keep up with new releases, make sure you go to our website, WPNWrestling.com, or visit us on social media to stay up to date with free matches, podcasts, and merchandise. Thanks again for watching. I'm April Dean. Bye, everybody. Here we are, folks. Championship match coming up. There's no better match to have than a championship match. And here we have the challenger for the women's title, former NWA Women's World Champion Tasha Simone, stepping into ringside. And you can see right now she's uh, quite feisty. She's uh, knocking off with some of the, the uh, fan base here. As this is not her home turf, but Quite honestly, I'm not sure if Tasha Simone would care either way. Uh, and if you've been familiar with her work at all, you can say that Tasha Simone is uh, somewhat, well, I'm not even going to say somewhat, she's quite fearless as it relates to the fans uh, getting in her face. And if, if nothing else, she's a hard hitter too. And okay, looks like she's got the word.
it sounds like what she was attempting to say is that don't worry about the past, you know, the present is going to be that, or the future, if you will, is going to be that, you going to be the new champion. Uh, but it sounds like some of the people were getting underneath her skin and she couldn't complete her statement. However, she's looking to be the uh, next women's champion here. But in order for her to do that, she's going to have to get past the likes of the champion, and that being Pandora, who up until this point has taken on several challengers. But I'm uh, relatively certain that as tough as Pancho Simone is, Pandora can be equally as tough. I've seen her in many, many challenges, many, many contests, against a variety of opponents. So this should be quite interesting. And you can see right now the contrast in style, or, or at least presentation. Pandora's coming out and having a good time, dancing in the aisleway, talking to the kids and whatnot. Tasha Simone was quite agitated when she came to the ring. You can see uh, Pandora with her number one fan and ringside there. Tasha almost didn't even care. Looked like she was about to come out and get her. You know she was surrounded by kids. Not necessarily the uh, nicest thing to do, but then again, whoever said Tasha Simone was nice. Pandora getting in their mindset. As you can hear, the, the uh, audience at large totally in support of Calm Like a Bomb Pandora. I don't think that there's going to be any question who the favorite is. You can see the referee, uh, referee Mason trying to keep Tasha Simone at bay. She's uh, having a hard time containing herself, apparently. Looks like that she's ready to get this thing in the way and come down against Pandora. For those that don't know about there, you can see they have a little touch small. She's, she's amped up, man. She's amped up, running back and forth. But uh, for those that don't know the history here, this is actually the second match between Pandora and Tasha Simone. The first time being Tasha, well, the roles were reversed. Tasha was the then NWA Women's World Champion. And uh, it was Pandora challenging for that championship. Now the titles or the roles have changed, and it's Pandora who enters into the uh, contest as a champion. Tasha Simone is like a caged animal over there. She is ready to go. Pandora uh, taking her moment. Because Tasha Simone, as Pandora was able to get out of the way, she was a, a step ahead. Now Tasha was about to jump her, but she tried. Yeah, Pandora say, I'm not that dumb. I, I can't say it enough. Tatcha is like a caged animal. She is, she is chopping at the bit to get this match underway. The, the championship belt is going to hand it over to the referee, and she missed the first time, but in this case, second time's the charm, not third go round. Since Pandora the rope stepping underneath the clothesline, Matches on the way, turns it around, hip toss, Pandora sets Tasha to go down. Arm drag, hook right there in the middle of the ring, catches her up, body slam. Before she can press the advantage, Tasha rolls out to the outside of the ring. She's sitting ringside, and now it's Pandora showing that even though she is a bit lighthearted coming out here, she is still every bit the competitor. Natasha Simone, Power Pell, who will walk away as the champion in this matchup. Both these calling for Tasha to get back in the ring. Pandora is uh, being pushed to the other side to allow for her challenger to re enter. Although it was Tasha Simone who jumps out of the match, they charge in each other. Pandora catches with an arm drag. The second one, those arm drags are popular in Japan. Now locks her down into an arm bar dead center of the ring, which is great positioning by Pandora. You can see she's pressing down on the jaw, neutralizing Simone. Roll through by Tasha, even though the arm bar is still applied. Get her to the top of her feet, cancel with an arm drag. Excuse me, drop toe hold up to the tank. Tasha was able to uh, pull herself out of the arm bar with the drop toe hold, and now she's locking out the leg. Pandora. 
Again, this action taking place center of the ring, so neither lady has the option of getting to roll. Reversal by Pandora and Kevin getting a reverse front face lock. Tasha Smoke doing a brilliant job of bridging herself up so not to be confused for the pin. Front face lock by Pandora, turns it around into an arm bar, forward into a hammer lock. Simone now looking for the escape, trying to reach the ropes. Pandora not allowing it. It has been catch as catch can thus far in the matchup. No one has illustrated a shining example of dominance just yet. Pandora drags Simone down to the mat. Uh, Simone's right foot might be outside of the uh, ring. Yeah, okay. She wasn't outside, but she was close, but she got a foot up to the bottom rope, so there's going to be a break. Again, Fever Lady illustrating complete dominance here. Pandora picks her up. Makes short order, brings a forearm shot across the jaw, second one. A return by Tasha Simone, and now Pandora's firing back open. And palm strike right there across the chest. Kick in the abdomen. You can hear the groans of pain between uh, Simone. Oh! Big chop. Smell like Smalls trying to absorb the pain. Oh! Slap right into She absorbed it in the chest, but not there across the abs. That exposed flesh. That girl was smart enough to uh, change the target. And now it is Tasha Simone's turn. Shoulder blocks. Big shot by Simone. Brings the second one down across the, the chest here. Looking for a third. Pandora's able to block it, reverses it. Ooh! Another one right there across the You can hear the, the screams of the pain. And uh, Simone's back out to the ropes. Clothesline in the corner. And now Tears of Shot sets her down. That turnbuckle corner. Oh, good forward on headlock. Great execution by Pandora. There's a freight wave down. There's the experience. Simone didn't even try to get the, uh, the kick out there. That's that ring awareness as she shot her foot out to that bottom rope. Here comes Pandora. Sets her up. Double leg drop rolling over to that Pandora face plant special. Three times is the magic number that can take the down. Both legs. Simone does that stuff left in her. She's kicked out. Hear the fans out there saying, come on, ref. But it was a great count by the referee. I know that the emotional favorite is Pandora. Reversal by Tasha Small says Pandora to ropes done underneath the clothesline. Kicking the at by Pandora. And now she's pegged into a side leg sweep. Roll through. Goes for the cover. Both over. One, two. Break of the eyes by Simone. Simone is not taking a lot of effort to kick out when it is not necessary. He has saved her through some energy, and although illegal, that Irene saved her through some time, effort, and power. Side suplex sends Pandora down into the mat. We can see both of these ladies exercising their knowledge of the ring. They've been working center of the ring, away from the ropes as much as they can. And Simone now dragging her knee across the, uh, the face, and then took it right into the chin across the throat. In fact, she still has to shim across the throat of Pandora. You can see Pandora gasping there. Simone now still sure wanting to press her advantage. Forearm shot to the abdomen, and Simone fires back into the face. Still strength by Tasha. Simone takes her to the launch position for the body snare. Walks her around a little bit. Oh, okay. She did not go for the body snare. She tied her up into the tree of woe. She agitates the crowd a little bit, saying, go Pandora, go. Target in. Boom. Full head of steam drives the knee into the abdomen of Pandora. Now she's looking for the cover, but that is bad ring position by Simone, and I am surprised that a veteran like her would go for a pin right there. Pandora's practically halfway hanging outside of the ring. There was no way that she was going to get a cover, a legal one. Ooh. You see Simone kind of patting the back, looking for that soft spot. And she let Pandora strike back, but she did time she absorbed it. She's ready. Pandora trying to fight back, but that knee lift cut her off. 
Now Simone walking over there by the hand to the ropes. And it is Pandora tied into the rope. A bad, bad position. Now she's using that cable for extra leverage. She's locking out the arms. I can imagine that that pain was all over the elbows. And she drove her hair man. You see Pandora's just driving the pain. She caught her both ways, slung her by the hair, and sent her face first into the mat. So she had to be in tremendous pain there. Got a modified uh, camel clutch. Center of the ring. Again, great, great, great ring position by Tasha Simone. Both Pandora and Simone have been keeping the action as far away from the ropes as they can in most cases. You can see Simone here being counted. But she keeps grabbing the hair. You got to get a better advantage on the, uh, the camera angle here. See, she raises her right hand, holds by the left. And she raises the left and holds by the right. And the referee is forced to keep counting. But she, she, she really can't do anything about it. And she is breaking before the five. And she, and she is. You see alternating the hands. You hear the fans out there playing, do your job. But the referee is doing her job. Doing his job is Tasha is still keeping it in the room. High impact leg drop right across the face. And you can feel, you can feel the confidence by Tasha Simone raising every second that she's in this back. And Laura struggling to try to find air or opportunity to turn this around, and she just cannot do it yet. Tasha Simone is in charge, and she is. Fully aware of the shoulder block to the back. And the second one. And now Simone just kind of scrunching Pandora in the corner. You can barely see it, but she's got about a hair just yanking her out. The ref still counting. I just heard a fan say, Are you scared of her? But again, you cannot blame the referee in this contest. He is doing everything that he's supposed to do. He's uh, counting to five, but Tasha Simone, being the veteran that she is, is making the breaks just before the disqualification. You have to remember, she is a former champion. She knows how this works. Pandora out of nowhere with the roll-up. One, two. Tasha Simone able to turn her body and get out of it. That might have been that last disc effort by Pandora as Tasha shoots her to the turbo, but charges in, catches the back elbow. That Tasha doesn't know where she is right now. Charges back in, catches the foot this time. And this may be Pandora's opportunity. Double clothesline. She was trying to make the comeback, and Tasha was trying to cut her off. Both ladies had the same idea, charging with the clothesline. And they have both knocked each other silly. The count is going out by the ref. If the count goes to a 10, the match will be declared a draw. The Championship will be retained by Pandora. She does have championship advantage in this match. Here we go out of a 30 minute tile. 10 minutes have passed by. Tasha going back up to her feet as is Pandora. A series of reversals since Pandora and Duncan in the clothesline and a clothesline to the back of the head. Uh, Tasha Simone by Pandora suits her down to the mat. And that was nasty. And that's an even nastier elbow that she caught her right there on the jaw. With. She might have been. Knocked her out, actually. She picks her back up, shoots her arm around, and for the neck right now, catches her. Again, brings the center of the ring, hook the leg. Tyka able to get out. But I think those shots to the head, following that neck breaker, may have done some damage as we can see if he's trying to get away. Pandora's trying to stop her and make him escape. Tasha's out on the uh, ring agent. Pandora catches her with a shoulder block. Trying to make sure that Tasha Simone does not get away from her. Here's Pandora coming up with it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody's got a leg. What it Tasha first. Look at the leg. Three. That was a bad fall. You can see he hooked the leg of Pandora. That got history. Russell that just shot in there. Pandora just drop kicked it, but the match is done. She, he just attacked her for what he did, but we saw Pandora was going for the suplex. He hooked the leg, which caused Tasha to fall down on Pandora's head. And then he held her leg down, so he didn't kick out. He just got Thor one half of the drink to Pandora's friend, and now it's all four in the ring. Tasha's going to Pandora, 
And this other guy, <laughs> a mystery wrestler in there. But the match is done. The championship has changed hands, and there's Oak. Drop kick by Josh Stark, sends him down. He goes back to our clothesline. That was a nasty, stiff, hard clothesline. And it just shot time to small now, but you can see Pandora realizing that the match is over as he has lost. Oh, okay. Kick your goddamn face, you can Okay, you can hear, uh, we apologize for that. Tasha Simone is not being uh, too kind to the fan base out here. That's, they, they are mad. They are upset that she just won. Okay, and again, we apologize for the language, but all that to say, Tasha Simone is the champion. Entering ringside, the strange and deranged Dimension Rose. Hi, folks, this is Mr. Green, ready to call the action for a first-time matchup. This will be an interesting one, to say the least, as it is a uh, pretty vast contrast of styles. Dimension Rose stepping in to meet her opponent, who will be announced in a moment Casey Carlisle. Rose. Just heard the... Uh, Official announcement. Well, we're having a having to apologize for the music here, but that, that's a whole different issue. This is a dementia that is her. Let's say traditional pre-match warm-up. She tends to do that on occasion, where she will bang her own head into the turnbuckle. So if she's willing to do that for herself, it should say something for what she would do to her opponent. He's out with a, uh, a short steel chain. Maybe something that she borrowed from a friend of hers, the butcher, who she's uh, done some uh, running around with. But her opponent, as stated earlier, is uh, the music is playing and she's getting prepared to come out. This being the former NWA Women's World Champion, Casey Carlisle, who has gone on to. Uh, a slew of championship collections. You can see she's boasting in that Dimension's crazy. Believe me when I say that Dimension is very aware. Not only does she, you know, is she aware that she's crazy, but she embraces the crazy. So I don't think that would be considered quite an insult to her. Call out the uh, clear favorite in this uh, particular instance here. I once stated before that Casey Carlisle uh, has what I call the Jerry Lawler syndrome, where outside of Georgia, she's uh, a little bit more of a, a rule breaker or someone that the fans do not take take to. But in Georgia, for whatever reason, she has endeared herself to the fan base. She's uh, pretty much below. Your referee does die. The referee is looking to get the chain away from uh, Dimension Rose as he should. Looking for a uh, fair matchup, even playing field, and having a steel chain certainly is not going to allow for that. But it is much better than her alternative. Generally speaking, she likes to carry around a knife. And uh, that can do a lot more than help you win a match, that's for certain. Which is or was yelling at the uh, fans there at ringside. The referee is looking to check for additional hardware that he may be sneaking in. Hopefully that won't be the case here. Casey Carlisle's getting there, getting the match, getting the crowd warmed up. Free to be fair is going over to uh, Carlisle's side, checking her. Checking the boots, making sure she's not sneaking at me. Carlisle has not been above uh, bending the rules, shall we say. The question is, will she bend them today? I would say that it is probably very probable that she will not. Carlisle is having a good time. She's, uh, she, she hasn't uh, gotten into serious mode quite yet, but uh, she's wanting to get the shirt off, but had, I guess have some fun doing it. Let me 
Remember, Carlisle is the one who had one of the most hard-hitting matches that, I, that we have called here on Women's Pro Wrestling Network. And she had her match some time ago against the Black Widow, Brianna Call. She had an unfortunate incident in that match, which is almost like with the Ruthless Acquainting Blood. She went into a different gear, and they were firing incredibly hard shots off against each other. So we know that she has it in. The uh, prediction here that if the match can stay somewhat civil, if she can manage to keep it moderate and ground her opponent, I would give the advantage to Case Carlisle. If it somehow elevates itself into a brawl, the mix of the roles will be the clear favorite in this. As the match is now underway and the side headlock is applied, we see the mix of roles trying to get out of it by you know, overpowering her. It looked like she was going for a back suplex, but Carlisle was able to hold it. Bring her over and still with the head side headlock applied has her down on the mat. She's uh, neutralized the mental road, sending the rain where checking the shoulders to make sure that she's not in there. The hair's being pulled as the mental trying to find a way out. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Carlisle looking to keep this as a wrestling match. The mental road trying to stretch the road, grabbing the hair, doing whatever she has to do to get out of this to try and cover it. Remember, Dimension Rose is not a catch that's catch can type wrestler. However, she is very efficient at what she does. You've seen Dimension Rose plow through competition and in various promotions. And there is no reason why she would not be able to do it here. And you see that Dimension Rose with that twist and arm bar going into biting the wrist. Not quite the technical uh, lockup that you would be looking for. It's Carlisle, brilliant counter. Comes in with the elbow, brings it out to that wrist lock. Second now is the bench to be able to find a way out of it. Carlisle popped her in the, the uh, back of the kneecap squad down. Coming down on the back of the arm with that knee of her own. It looks like she may be looking to take away the power. The dimension goes driving those knees into the bicep and collarbone. Plus the referee down, making sure that there is no submission, no tap out, no, uh, given by DeRose. Back up to a vertical base on both of them. DeRose cranking the arm down on uh, Casey Carlisle right across her shoulder. Right to the hammerlock. You know, and despite what I say about DeRose wanting to probably stretch the rules, bend the rules, maybe turn into a brawl, do not take her wrestling ability lightly. Once upon a time, she was a uh, well-trained wrestler when she was in another life as uh, Aisha Sunshine, but I'm pretty sure she does not want me bringing that up or that name. Aisha Sunshine is dead. That's what she told me in uh, one interview, and I fully believe it. Rose reaching out for the uh, rope by her feet, escaping those head scissors there. Forces the break. But Dimension Rose does know, and she's aware of the rules now, that how much of the rules she will follow is an entirely different thing. Carlisle trying to get the crowd on her side, but she doesn't have to work hard to do that. She already has the crowd very much in the palm of her hand, but it does disturb the roads. Carlisle uh, elbow tie up, center of the ring. Carlisle ropes it on into a rear waist lock. Stomp on the foot. Uh, Dimension Rose, again, not a classic counter, but an effective one. Awesome there. Not quite a snap there, but does it by the hair. And now she goes in for a blatant chunk right in front of the referee who's trying to get the break. Three maneuvers in a row, which has some semblance of wrestling, but not quite. This, uh, Dimension Rose has been the rule, as we stated earlier, that she knew. It looks like it might have gotten the ire of Carlisle as he comes down with four arms and fists. Sends the Rose into the Rose. The big, stiff clothesline drops the Mitchell Rose to the back elbow with a lot of authority. Double axe handle, sends her down. This may get the two count. No. Carlisle, when motivated, can brawl with the best of them. Will she be able to outbrawl the Mitchell Rose? And the Mitchell Rose isn't looking out by. She reversed that and uh, shot off into the rope and brought it into a tight in the head. Big body slam because 
Carlisle right there at center of the back. You can see the obvious difference in style here. Mix and roll diving, Katie Carlisle up with Pete. Oh, he's going to say she's definitely going to want to move. And she didn't and wasn't able to do it. And he came down with that vertical splash right there into the abdomen. And you can see her shaking her finger. No, he's not ready to give this thing up yet. If there's one thing that we know from watching Casey Carlisle in various matches is that she does have heart. She is willing to fight the fight to try to win. Hits for the amount of championship that she has collected. However, Dimitri Rose has not been interested in championship so far. She's been interested in collecting body part and building her nightmare, as you like to say, as she dropped that head, but right across the goal of Casey Carla. Dimitri Rose is on with the fans in the front row. She does not want to do that. Doesn't want to give Carlisle breathing room if she's looking to win this match. And she drops a foot right across the lower back. It looks like she may be digging into the eye. The referee's checking in to make sure that she's not doing anything illegal. But it's almost certain that Dimitri Rose is. Carlisle checking her down. Looks like that Rose did claw her up a bit. And without even digging twice, Dimitri Rose is going to the corner for the field game. Wrapping it around her fist, the referee's warning her that if she uses it, she's going to be disqualified. If she doesn't care, dives in, goes for a big punch. Call out counters with the kick and the gun. Big suplex. Goes go for the cover. Mitch was able to get herself up in a forearm shot. Several forearm shots to the back. In case the call out drives her down, now head punch. A repeated head punch to the back. The Mitch of the road. Is capable and perfectly willing to use any portion of her anatomy as a weapon. It is only fortunate that Carlisle was able to avoid that steel chain. And it may have cost Dimension Rose to win, but it certainly would have been the uh, bad on Carlisle's part as well. Four arm shot. Dimension Rose back to shoot off into the ropes again. Kind of like Carlisle comes back to the second one. A third one. Nasty chops into the ropes. Carlisle jumped up on him. It's like Carlisle might have been going for something else. And Rose was able to change that momentum and force it into a spine that drove her down. So whatever Carlisle was looking to do worked in the Rose's favor. He did not get the pinfall. Casey Carlisle is still in this matchup. Rose with big measured right hands right across the forearm, forehead, excuse me, of Casey Carlisle. And now speaking of forehead, we got head shot from Dimension Rose to the forehead of Casey Carlisle, which has driven her right down to the mat. Rose pulling her out away from the ropes again. Whatever you can say about Dimension Rose, she does know her wrestling kick out by Casey Carlisle. Know that Carlisle cannot be pinned too close to the rope. She does not want the rope break. Carlisle with a slap across the face of the next row. Now a forearm shot. A second one. A third one. And now it looks like Carlisle is going to shoot the rope in to the rope. I need a la Harley Race. Two. The road gets the shoulder up. See Carlisle clear student of the game. That is a classic move. That big high knee. He didn't quite get it up high enough to bring it across the uh, side of the head like she wanted to, I'm sure. Reversal by Demetro. He's called out of the rope. And he catches Carlisle. What was going to be a fall away slam. What we call it strange at the range drop. And Carlisle looks to be unconscious. He just could get the win. Two. Able to get that right shoulder up. He get it up with authority. Surprising to me. And probably the fans. And quite possibly the case of Carlisle as well. And she's digging down to get something extra. To win this match. Or to survive the upload. And you see the Vincent Rose is arguing with the referee. She seems like she feels like she should have gotten it. And Carlisle fight from underneath. The forearm shot. Fifth. And more forearm shot grabs the Vincent Rose hand, pulls the back before she can get away in a series of forearm shots. And a reverse. Oh my god! A 
cool rotation for what was going to be a distance forearm right across the head of Dimension Rose, but Rose was able to get out of the way and crack the eyes. Just call out down, the referee's bell is wrong, and now Rose. But what she wanted to do earlier, wraps the fifth with the crane. Nice. Take the call out and a three count. Puts call out down to win the match. You can hear the people saying that was a cheap shot, but you can't blame the referee to see him holding his ear. I mean, with that torque, that call out put into that discus forearm, it probably would be enough to put down most human being walking the planet. I'm sure his equilibrium is probably taken away from him with that shot. Carlisle looks to be still out as Rose grabs her own hair off of the mat and start to chew it. Hopefully she's not turning that into a snack. Gregory's questioning it, but the bell is already wrong. The individual uh, decision is going to be laid down. And there it is, you hear it again. Dominion Rose is officially the winner. So regardless that the referee sees the chain on the side of the apron, it makes no difference at this point. Dimension of the Rose is the winner in this first time confrontation right. between Casey Carlisle and We're Dimension of the Rose. See if I can get these two ladies back together for a future date. I didn't kind of like the way that ended. Casey Carlisle trying to pull herself together. Now, next week, I might be a little wobbling. <laughs> She's saying that something happened. Like she got hit in her head. She's aware that she got hit. You know that whatever she took that shot from, she was blasted and knocked her out. You can see it. Call out finding well, it looked like she was at least explaining it to the to the fans. Saying that she hit her. Take the call out right. She did come up short this match. Tayshia's got pictures and shirts over here. <laughs> So I'm bringing out some announcing uh, that Casey Carlisle's merchandise. So I guess the night won't be a total, total loss, but you can hear that uh, Carlisle is still pleading her case for some of the fans out there. She, I just heard it. She said, I can feel the bump. And she must have got hit and hit hard. And she got a, a bump on her head. Carlisle has been defeated, which is, uh, in some people's books, watching this, I'm sure, a bit of an upset. Multi-time champion, former world champion, Casey Carlisle bit the loss. It took a steel chain to do it, but regardless of how it was accomplished, the Mitchell Rolls now has a championship, a win over a former champion to put in her resume. That's it, folks. You can hear us saying what happened, but the match is over. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you here in the Women's Program for the Network in the future. Okay. Welcome to another great wrestling event. Oh, this is your host, Mr. Green. And we are now watching that young lady, the wild eyed Southern girl, the vicious redhead, Jesse Bell Smothers, have a unique entrance into the ring as she is accompanied by members of the Bad Boys Club. As you just heard. Because that young man there, Shane Andrews, is just a little bit more than a, a, a accompaniment. He holds a special place in the life of uh, Jesse Bell Smothers. But it is not about their relationship today. It is about winning the Women's Championship. Tonight it is a vacated title, which will be contested under three-way dance rules. And now about to be introduced to the other two competitors of this match that the second one being introduced right now or walking out right now the green and black and that being Serdox <laughs> Jesse Bell and Serdox do have a bit of a uh, history together as you can find out on uh, our women's pro wrestling network page and channel Cheap plug for us. They have a match together. I'm not sure if uh, those things will come into place here as the uh, the price is a little bit higher as there's championship gold winning 
for the winner in this matchup. And okay, Jesse Bell and uh, Sarah Knox just took a little hand check there on the side. I don't, I don't know if you caught that. You see Jesse, she was uh, whispering in the ear of Sarah Knox. But as that's going on, coming into the ring right now is the uh, perennial favorite, Tall Like a Ball Pandora. She's entering into ringside, into what is uh, largely considered, or what was largely considered, her home base. Those for the women's championship, and she, you can see right now she is the favorite as, a, as it relates to the fans as well. The, uh, the crowd is uh, easily on her side. Not hard to dislike or uh, not hard to root for Pandora. She comes out with colorful attire, unique mask. She is quite the character when she is on her A game. But will it be enough? Get her through this this obstacle today. It will be an interesting uh, it will be an interesting proposition, to say the least. Certainly put it that way. As she uh, makes her her rounds around ringside. They see the masks come off. Of course, the referee has the championship belt in the ring. Uh, Sarah Dox and Jessica Simmons are hanging a little bit too close to each other for my comfort. Was the Bad Boys Club out hovering around ringside? It does not seem like a, a great situation overall. Pandora! There she is, folks. Pandora. She uh, three time champion already. Trying to get the crowd there. Okay, Sarah Dawson just been a so It was a little colluding over there. Then. Cops double close line after making the attempt. Now Pandora picking them both down. The first elbow sends out Jeff Bell Smothers and now she just slaps Saradox into a side headlock. There's a little bit of collusion. Saradox and Jeff Bell and Smothers with the bell rang. They were, they were sitting there ready, ready to come out and charge. And Pandora, being the veteran that she is, was able to adapt. Duck underneath and catch them both with a double cross line the roll. Side headlock applied by Pandora. Keeps Saradox in, but Saradox makes the counter. Pulls her into a hammer lock. Rolls her through into a side headlock of her own. Takes her over. Side headlock still applied. Dance in the ring. Jesse Bell noticeably absent from this three way dance. He took the hit with the powder to the outside of the ring. Leaving Saradox to do the work right now. Saradox comes out of the hit, says this goes back. Into a uh, side, well, it looked like she was trying to get a side. I like Pandora's roll through of that. And now you see Jessica Bell, the cameras call her. She's out there talking to the uh, members of the Bad Boys Club. I don't know how they're going to be uh, influential in this match right now. Front face lock by Pandora. Dents in the ring. Great ring positioning. If she's able to get a uh, submission, there will be no ropes to save her opponent. And she had a theory to be this. Drops face first down on uh, Sarah Dox. Goes for a cover, but. Jesse Bell in to make the save and rolls Sarah Knox out of the ring, or at least tells her to get out of the ring, and now she picks up Pandora. And now the fight is over between Pandora and Jesse Bell Smokers. Jesse Bell trying to uh, acquire the women's championship here in uh, West Georgia. So kicks to the stomach by Pandora. Leaves Jesse Bell in the corner, charges in, close line. It's an out, bulldog and headlock. Jessica Bell could be down for the count, but it doesn't look like she's going to go with double leg drops. And there's that Pandora face plant pressure. Three times to the back, rolls the back through, and pulls the legs for a pinball. Two. And you may not have caught it. Sarah Dox just yanked the legs of the referee. So even if Jessica Bell was unable to come out, Sarah Dox was there to stop the count. Not necessarily for Jessica Bell's event, but for hers completely. She, uh, Pandora on the inside. She's, she's amped up, but she's ready to go. Jesse Bell and Sarah Knox out there making plans. I don't know how that exactly is going to work. It has a three-way dance that cannot be cold winners. That can only be one winner of a championship. So at some point in time, you would imagine that uh, it could get a little hairy between Sarah Knox and Jesse Bell if they are truly trying to win the match and take the championship. Jessica Bell sitting in front row right now and 
leaving the uh, work to Sarah Knox in the middle of the ring. You see her right there flexing her muscles and challenging Pandora to what appears to be a test of strength. Pandora does not seem all that amused by the uh, braggadocious challenge from Sarah Knox. First time we see Sarah Knox came off as such a, uh, a likable individual, but I guess all the spare love, war, and championships as it relates to pro wrestling, and the championship is up for grabs. And you see that the locker just got out of the chair. Double axe handle by Jessica Smoke. Now both on the pack of Pandora on the back. Series of boots. Now Pandora's getting her face planted into a hard, hard canvas. Pandora, Theradox, double duplex executed nicely. Sets her down to the back. You can see the uh, look of Jesse Bell. Hooks the leg. And, and look at that. There, there was a little bit of uh, hesitation about Theradox, but she was, she looked like she also was ready to kind of pounce on uh, Jesse Bell. As I said before, there can only be one winner. Jesse Bell got her foot on the hair of Pandora, keeping it down, and she was scraping Theradox kicked her in the back. So even though that is a uh, one person waiting in the winner's seat, they are still cooperating. Surprisingly. Jesse Bell draping her stuff across the throat of uh, Pandora. And Saradox entertains the referee. Jesse Bell drapes her again across the second rope, but now she's sitting out on her. Riding her, if you will. Just heard the official time about it. The uh, ring announcer, five minutes gone by in this uh, championship contest. Jesse Bell takes Pandora face first into the top turnbuckle. Let's do it over here. If you've never been inside a wrestling ring, the center of that top turnbuckle. You can feel that turnbuckle pad in the middle underneath. Pandora's able to counter. Now she's going out as after Sarah Knox. She's trying her best to fight both of these women for all intents and purposes. Drop kick by Jesse Bell. For all intents and purposes, although this is a three-way dance, it is mainly a handicap match, and the uh, beneficiaries of this handicap match are Jesse Bell and Sarah Knox, leaving Pandora, the odd woman out. You hear her screaming as she was poking out and getting these kicks, and she's trying her best fight from underneath. Kick to Jesse Bell, gets up to the feet, now she's fighting Sarah Knox, partners over to Jesse Bell, forearm shot. Now the rig of the guy cuts it off, sends Pandora back down to the mat. Sleeper hold applied, and now it comes, now it happens. Sleeper hold to Jesse Bell. There's no love lost there. Counter by Pandora brings them both down to jawbreaker for victory. Death Rudge catches her in the side of the head with a forearm shot. Catches her, shoots her outside the ring as Pandora kicking the abdomen to Sarah Knox. Hooks her in for the front face block, TDT. And nobody does it better than Pandora hooking both legs. Two, three. Surprisingly, from what I would consider the, the, the jaws of defeat, I was almost ready to write Pandora off, but she somehow managed to Pandora. take the championship from what was a seemingly impossible situation. Pandora has won the women's championship. There you see it, Jesse Bell. Sarah Knox exiting ringside. As they're complaining to each other. <laughs> so you can hear them saying, you lost. Both of them uh, having a, a unique perspective on it. Jesse Bell, who's tossed out of the ring. Sarah Knox probably feels like if she hadn't been tossed out, she could have won. Vice versa. But as it relates, it doesn't matter who is complaining to who. The championship has been won by Calm Like a Ball. And North. 
the fourth time in her career she is wearing that particular championship gold. Opportunity to wear it. She's back in the driver's seat, folks.